Hi, my name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. I produce the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings. My name is Ben Dickerson, and I'd like to welcome you all to Ben and Barry on Football. Thank you, Ben. Ben and Barry on Football here on YouTube. We are entering the first full week of preseason games in the NFL. So there's a full slate of games. We've had our first game, the Hall of Fame game. Ben, did you get a chance to take a look at that? I did see a little bit of it, but I didn't sit and watch the entire game through. I'll tell you what, though. That Hall of Fame induction was tremendous. If anybody saw it out there, that was I thought it was really good. But it all it's always good, every year, every year. But I digress about the game. Well, no, no, you know, it was the Hall of Fame weekend. So, you know, take a minute, you know, whatever you have to say about the, the, the whole Hall of Fame, the ceremonies, the speeches. I mean, that was as much a part of the weekend as the game itself. Um, yeah. You know, we, we didn't get to see a lot of the starters. We knew we wouldn't see a lot of the starters in that game. Um, but the Hall of Famers, we got to see plenty of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so what stood out to you? Um, what stood out to me? I think Ty Law gave a great speech. And um, uh, my boy Ed Reed, I enjoyed his speech. I also enjoyed his hat. That, with, that brim. with green brim on the top. No. <laughs> the brim of his hat looked like my kitchen floor. <laughs> it was shining. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody likes his bust because they really worked on his hair. You know, the whole shock of hair thing that he's got. Yeah, going. that's great. It, it, that one really, really looked like him. A lot of times, and it's probably from watching on TV, you take a look at the bust and you're like, does that really look like him? But at some time, somewhere along the line, yeah, he did look like that. <laughs> he was on the set um, as they were, you know, sitting with all the, you know, people with the mics. Mm. Yeah. And it was funny because he broke out his cigar. <laughs> and I think oh. it kind of like, everybody was like, oh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> so every well, cigar, guys, it's just as good to just carry it around and put it in your mouth every once in a while. Without yeah, like big time with if you're gonna do it, you know. It's, it's right, a, it's right. A cigar, no doubt about it. <laughs> um, he, it, first of all, practically everybody cried. So it's you know, big strong will knock your head off, man. All them boohoo and like a champ. That that's always funny. Um, yeah. His uh, Ed Reed's speech is somewhere between telling his story and, and trying to be. Um, a motivational speaker almost, you know, he's, he's in there. Um, yeah. But I think he was in the ballpark. He, he was trying to convey something. I, I hope most people caught on to it, but yeah. Um, and then you, and we actually shared on our uh, Facebook page, the uh, speech that um, uh, Tony Gonzalez gave, especially the piece about where he addressed it to his children. Right. You know, and try to give them advice. You know, mm -hmm. that was that was an interesting. Champ Bailey. Did you see him? Yeah. You know, he, it was interesting um, as he tried to turn it to race and talk about I'm a black man first. And it almost got like he wasn't. I felt I don't know. Uncomfortable is not the word, but I kind of felt he kind of muddled his whatever it is he was trying to say a little bit did you I, get that i think he was trying to call some kind of parallels to the fact that although i may be famous uh i may be a famous athlete um i had a long career and now i'm going into the hall of fame so people see me they know me he said regardless of all of that I am a black man, and I think he, from there he was trying to go to to keep it simple, probably to the speech that a lot of guys now are finding uh, that they have to kind of give to their young sons as how to deal with the police. That's what it sounded like to me. That's what I believe he was he was trying to convey. Justin, you saying in, in the way that you said it, I think confirms what I when I said the word muddled. It, it was a little unclear you know, what is actual, to me anyway. Um, 
because I understood. I mean, yes, you, you're definitely a black man. I understand all of that. Right. Um, so it, it, I guess it was the structure of it. Did you get to see any of Mawai's speech? Did you get to see anybody else's speech? Yes, I saw Mawai's speech. It was really good. Uh, he declared his wife the, the most smoking hot woman at the place. Oh, really? That was the, as soon as he got to the, because <laughs> she, she um, introduced him and, and took the towel off the bus with him. And he's standing there and he's looking at her and they're hugging, he's looking at the bus. And then she goes and sits down and he goes over to the, to the mic and immediately says, I got the most smoking hot wife. Like that. <laughs> I was like, huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> and you know, he's the miss he's Mr. Born again. So he caught everybody off guard with that one. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was but that was fun. He it, it was he was having some fun with it. All right, all right. Um, yeah, I watched a little bit of the game. It, it was, you know, like we said. Everyone's running their stuff. They want to see this. They want to see that. It's all experiment. It's all, you know, exhibition until you get near the end. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, we don't want to lose this game. So let's uh, let's get our act together here and at least execute on whatever it is we're going to show, you know. Um, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the upcoming schedule, this coming schedule. We, we have two games on Thursday night. We have games on Friday. No, I'm sorry. We have a slate of games on. We Thursday. have a full slate of games on Thursday night. Full That's crazy. slate. Yeah, yeah. You, again, watching you know the NFL channel, they kept talking about I guess the the the, print, the prime time games. Right, right. And I'm thinking about myself. Really focus on the dates because they're in the future. Now that they're coming up, you go, oh my god, they've been talking about this game and this game. They're all on Thursday night. It's like six games on Thursday night. A ton of games. Then you have a couple games on Friday, and then you have the the games on Saturday with the finale at nine. We'll talk about that. So let's just go through the games very quickly. We'll start off Jets Giants. Jets Giants. That's a great game uh, to watch for particular individuals. Number one, um, I'd like to see um, Sam Darnold after having all, just about a whole season under his belt. He probably won't start the game, though. But if he does, he might play a series. That would be good to see. Uh, if Le'Veon Bell plays, and I haven't heard that he wasn't going to play, it'll mm-hmm. probably just be for a series. Um, other than that, I don't know. I'll be looking for uh, anybody that's making big plays and try to make note of them and see if they're still around come game two. Now, the Giants, that's another story. Tonight, you're going to see... Thursday night. I, that's what I meant. Thursday night, you're going to see Daniel Jones. Okay? The heir apparent to Eli Manning. Um, from what I've been hearing, he's very intelligent, very football savvy, um, extremely poised, has learned the playbook already, like it's no big deal. So it's just going to be a matter of... Um, how he looks when the when the when the real bodies start flying. That's going to be interesting um, because it could spark that whole conversation about the quarterback. And, you know, maybe spark a little controversy. Uh, they don't need a spark. Everybody's, <laughs> everybody's looking for because uh, you know Eli never gets hurt. You know that Eli's not going to get hurt. So. Everybody's waiting to see when is the game when he's going to completely implode because okay. it may take that for them to start Daniel Jones. But something's going to happen. I believe I'm predicting – my bold prediction for the season for the Giants is that he will be starting before it's all over. During the 2019 season? Yes. during Something will happen during the 2019 season – to give the Giants a reason to start Daniel Jones. Okay, okay. When do you guys play the Bears? Because Khalil oh. Mack could be the reason. <laughs> no, it could be anybody. It could I can, be one keep remembering um, <laughs> that, that one shot of Eli getting up off the ground 
and his, his eyes looked like they were rolling around in his head and everything. It was like, we were wondering, it's like, is he going to make it through the season? Because <laughs> it's just, you know, but. Yeah, he never gets hurt, man. Never. Never. His, his streak only came uh, to an end because of a coaching error. <laughs> All right. Colts Bills. Colts Bills. Colts Bills. You won't see those two starting quarterbacks either, will you? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yo, they are scaring me with Andrew Luck. After we went through the whole shoulder thing, he's throwing a midget ball. Now he's throwing a high school ball. After all of that, now they're talking about, oh, he's got a calf strain, and people start going, Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant. People in Indianapolis are losing their minds. They are losing their minds right now. <laughs> Kevin Durant, really? Remember, the first thing was he's got a strained calf. And right. He right. Said, ah, it's more than that. And sure enough, boop, there goes the Achilles. So now, every time people hear strained calf, they go crazy. All right. So we got we got luck there. There's a question about him. All right. Uh, and the Bills, anything on the Bills side? Well, the thing about the Bills, I believe, is they're supposed to have a very much improved defense. Okay, now, again, um, there's, they've got to play a lot of guys because cut down day is coming up. So you may not see any real intricacy on the defense. I just want to get a look at some of these first-year players and second-year players maybe. They show a little bit about what's going on with this supposed strength of the team now. Okay, okay, all right. Let's move on. Jaguars, Ravens. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. When you when I hear Jaguars versus Ravens, for two seconds I forgot it's preseason. Cause you know what I mean? I hear Jaguars Ravens, I'm like, oh, we got a game. We got a game. But I don't know. I can't think of any real name skill position players that the Jaguars are going to have to study uh, or who were high draft picks. Um, The Ravens, they can't play Lamar, but I don't know. They could play Lamar early. You know, one of the things I heard, and it was relative to the Cardinals, Mm -hmm. is that the schemes and the, the offenses and the things that the coaches actually want to run during the regular season, they don't want to show in the preseason. Exactly. It'll be all vanilla. That's so why I say it's so vanilla, hard. We have the second, the second third strings. We don't, we don't have the, the, um, the starters. And even we, – and we'll talk about this a little bit later. They, were, they have the, um, the uh, practices between the teams now. Yes. You know, and Gruden and the coach for the uh, Rams. Right. Know each other, coach with each other, and definitely Gruden did not want to scrimmage and or play them in the preseason because they know each other too well. And he okay. wants to keep all the, the mystery, as much mystery I, stuff as he can. I got so you. I, I think that's uh, an interesting aspect of the preseason. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later on. So Jags, Ravens, we won't, you know, well, this is the funny part with the Ravens because they have backup quarterbacks that are similar to the starting quarterback. Like, I don't think they're just going to run like out the power eye and just run, you know, like, are they? No. any of the stuff that they would normally want to do since the second string quarterback can actually run those, you know, those plays. Yeah. That, well, that's, that's their offense. Everybody kind of knows that's their offense. You well, they have a whole new offense. What they're saying is that we're going to revolutionize. Yeah. Well, you're not going <laughs> to find that out tomorrow night. <laughs> Revolution will not be televised in the preseason. We're going to revolutionize that we have a quarterback that could get a thousand yards in the season but we're going to make sure that he only gets 800. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's the big that's plan. The they that need him to throw that more. That, that's the plan. They need him to throw more and run less. <laughs> and if they can, if they can give him 
a passing attack that allows him to do that in a comfortable fashion, then that'll be great for them. Awesome, awesome. Let's move on. Now, this should be interesting. Titans, Eagles. Titans, Eagles. Now, Titans um, knocked the – didn't the Titans, like, beat the Eagles last – was this last season on that last – Last second touchdown? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, I think so. So it's, I think that the Eagles and the Titans have a little bit of current history. The Eagles are feeling real good about themselves right about now. They're the highest rated team in the Madden game. The most people, a lot of people are saying they're one of the most talented teams. Um, even though I haven't seen the – Odds for them to win the Super Bowl, I think the Patriots are still odds on favorites there. Um, but I know that the Eagles and the, their fans are feeling real good about themselves. But mm -hmm. I don't know much as far as the Titans. What do you got for me? Yeah, well, like you said, the, the reports about the Eagles, from what I've heard on local radio, uh, national TV, as well as local TV, and the network, um, everybody likes the talent on the Eagles. And everybody's thinking that uh, – they may make, might make another run at a chip. Uh, of course, we know as NFL fans, it's hard to determine that. And we've seen so-called teams coming in early looking like real powerhouses. And sometimes things just don't work out that way. Um, the Titans, uh, again, I don't know a whole lot about any high-picked rookies that they have, uh, but I will be looking for guys that stand out and make it past the first cut. Um, I doubt if we'll see any Derrick Henry, but he's a, he's a big mystery going into the season from the way that he ended last season on a really strong note uh, in the last five games. So everybody's kind of holding their breath, waiting to see Derrick Henry. Also, uh, I believe there's a little bit of a quarterback controversy. Mr. Mariota is supposed to get some, um, some work. In practice, let me see. Who's that from? Uh, oh, darn it, I can't, I can't remember where I read that. But he's got some competition in camp. So we got a little quarterback controversy in, uh, in Tennessee. Okay. All right. Falcons, Dolphins. People are saying that, pe that, that the, um, people are sleeping on the Falcons. At, at, and I've heard that, that, that spoken. And it looks as though Fitz is going to be the starter uh, for the Dolphins. So does that mean we're going to see Josh in the preseason more? Josh. Quarterback that came over from the Cardinals. Oh, as far as this weekend, yes. I believe we'll see a lot more of him. You might see one series out of Fitzpatrick, but if they don't play him at all, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Josh is, yeah. I mean, let's face it, Josh played last season for the Cardinals, so he's got a season of NFL football under his belt, okay? But because the team wasn't that good, they took a lot of L's, and it wasn't much different from his senior year. So, you know, I'm sure they want to see a lot more from him in game situation. Okay, okay. So we'll, we'll, we will get a chance to see him in the uh, Dolphins. I'm, I'm pretty sure, yes. Miller, Dolphins, the offense. Um, next up, we mentioned the Patriots and the, they're going to be going up against the Lions who are trying to install the Patriot way in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if that's going to work out for my man, uh, Matt Patricia there, but, uh, he's well, going Matt to Patricia's try. Matt Patricia's riding around in a four by four because he apparently injured himself somehow. <laughs> Coaches are going down like flies. What's going on? Man? And the players. We'll talk more about that. So, <laughs> um, who's backing up Tom Brady these days? Who's, who's going to be playing? Oh, oh, it's a veteran. It's um, uh, uh, uh Hoyer. Uh, Brian Hoyer. Hoyer. My, yeah, my you know Niner. Hoyer. X Niner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Hoyer's a solid B guy. Safe. Yeah. He's safe. That's your quarterback. Seen just about everything. Knows the system inside and out. Sits in the quarterback room every day with Tom Brady for the last how many years? Safe. Well, it hasn't been that long, but 
You know, I always thought it was an interesting phenomenon in the preseason when you have that experienced quarterback as the second or third stringer. Right. A lot of times they come in and they're firing up them young guys, you know, <laughs> you know, looking good and everything. But it is the young guys that they're firing up. And, and, and the scores can be misleading sometimes, when, or, you know, the yardage you see in completions and, and things of that nature. But, yeah. uh, you know, as opposed to the new quarterbacks that are coming in. And let's move on. Speaking of new quarterbacks, uh, Redskins, Browns. Redskins or Washington, yes. as we Washington. would call them. Yes, and the Washington. Browns, and I immediately think of Dwayne Haskins. Um, there's a real uh, battle going on for the Washington quarterback spot. A lot of people are saying that Dwayne Haskins is good enough to get it done and end up being the starter. Now, whether he's the day one starter, I don't know, but I'm sure he's going to play plenty um, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, they got Colt McCoy. Now, strangely enough, the Browns – Who's backing up? Baker? Is what's his name still there? Is Tyrod still there, right? He got injured. They didn't let him go. I'll have to double check that. Yeah, we got to check our depth chart there. I don't remember hearing about them letting him go. He went out with an injury and it was a it was a season ender, I think. It was a knee, so So they still have well that's that's pretty good that they would have um, Tyrod Taylor there as, as a backup, you know. Yeah, and I'm sure they got another young guy somewhere that they got in the later rounds. You're talking about safe. I mean, that's that's safe right there. Because Tyrod's not going to turn the ball over. He's probably not going to score either, but uh, <laughs> he's not going to turn the not ball gonna over. Not going to score either. <laughs> now, the Browns have so much talent. Most of that talent will be sitting on the bench watching the game. Yeah, all the guys that everybody's dying to see play together will probably not play. OBJ will be sitting there. And nah, them guys, they, they might not even dress. Huh? They might not even dress. They, they may not even dress. It, it's it, That's the shame of the preseason. We're all excited for football, and they call themselves the networks I'm talking about, doing us a favor by giving us six Count them six games on a Thursday night. That's unheard of. And then NFL football on Saturday, too? Oh, man. But they're preseason games. If they were real games, I'd be losing my mind right now. <laughs> well, the only reason that, again, the, the thing that uh, uh, attracts me is the discovery of new talent, you know? And you see, I know there was a, the, the running back – um, in the Hall of Fame game, that was, I think it was running back for the Broncos. He scored the first touchdown. Light skin uh, guy, big bushy hair. I don't know. If he, no, I'm not. No, not the starting running back. Not that guy. Oh, there, there's another guy that they had. Um, um I. Oh, think I don't they, know how deep they went. Yeah, an African name. But the point of the matter is simply that this guy had some acceleration, and I'm watching it, and I'm like. I see him in the hole and zoom, you know, especially when he was down there on the end on the uh, goal line. Mm -hmm. and, you know, sometimes, especially with the young guys, they get so excited, their feet's moving fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> they would normally not completely under control, but he looked he looked pretty good, you know, in in that setting. And so I, it was like, okay, who's that guy? And then who's that guy? And we did get a chance to see uh, a little bit of the backup quarterback trying to. Um, who, did, who was the tight end that we talked about for the Broncos? And we say keep an eye on him, Fan, Noah Fan. Noah Fan. Yeah. Who didn't look specifically um, uh, awesome, but he did have a few catches. And I think it was more a matter of timing and coordination in the offense than anything dealing yeah. with talent. Um, but we do get a chance to see some of, some of that young talent, and, and I really enjoy that. Um, Texans, Packers. Ah, uh, well, on the Packers side, I hope that they let Geronimo Allison and uh, my man Valdez Scantling get some good run in the first half, uh, even though they will probably be the two 
starting wideouts across from uh, Devontae Adams. They're young guys. This is only their second year, and they're trying to really show that they deserve to be in those two starting spots. So I hope they get at least a series, if not a quarter. Early on, it's really, you know, everybody has their own uh, a way of approaching the preseason, whether the guys want to give the starters a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. I'm making myself that guy, you know, and I'm uh, saying this is what I would do. Okay, what would and, you do? No, I'm saying that's what I would do. I'm saying I, when I say I hope they play this guy at least a series or maybe a quarter, I'm saying that's because I would do that. You would, would do you that. would you would drift off and and reduce it as he approached the actual regular season instead of maybe giving him a little more as you approach the regular season. No, they're going to get the most they're going to get in game three. So okay. game one, that's why I said game one, and this is just for the Packers for those two guys that I named. I'm going specifically team by team how I feel about who they showcase early in the game. Okay. I would give them at least at minimum a series and possibly the first quarter. If maybe they got a turnover and they got the ball back and had it twice in the first quarter. I would like to see them actually playing together before they okay. start to dig deep on the bench. Okay. Okay. And they okay. That that's that's good stuff. Good stuff. Um on the Texan side, any anybody that you're looking for over there? Uh, on the Texan side, I know darn well they're not gonna play Deshaun. We won't see Deshaun probably till the third, to the third game because they can't take any chances with him. Uh, everything they do and everything they're going to do, kind of rides on his shoulders. So, you know, uh, won't be Let's many cards. Panthers, Bears. Let me just say, um, with the new Madden, I'm running some practices, and. Khalil Mack is unstoppable. If you don't have <laughs> that guy with a serious tight end blocking and maybe a fullback on that side, it, it, it throws your whole offense out of whack. Because you, mm. you, you, know, you don't – like in some cases, especially with the Niners, I might want to send my fullback out because he can do that. He's got some right. catch. But with Khalil Mack over there, every time I try to uh, play action – when I turn around and hand the ball off, I'm looking at him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. On the game, he's a monster. We know in real life he's a monster, but on the game, he's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. We won't see Cam, especially we won't Ooh. see Cam, because Cam is still – he's in the, uh, the rehab, throwing the football rehab uh, process now. Yeah, I don't think he's declared himself as 100% quite yet, but uh, he's he's playing with an NFL football. Let's put it that way. Can't be too careful with a shoulder quarterback. Can't be too careful. Right, right, right. And then Mitchell Trubisky uh, probably won't get much, but he might get a little bit more because I don't think Mitchell's that you – know, he's not he's not like everybody's super sure about him yet. No, this this is third year. I know. So it's no, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. It's it's still early. He's still young. Okay. I wouldn't mind giving him a series. I give him a series this game, a quarter of the second game, and in the third game you're playing till halftime. Okay. Okay. All right. That would be my basic plan. Broncos, Seahawks. Uh, is that really there was something interesting about one of those teams? You said Broncos? Is that is that the Broncos or is Browns? You had the Broncos playing somebody else. No. Yeah. What I don't know, what do I have here? What am I looking at? Why am I seeing that? I made a note and that doesn't sound right at all. Let's skip to the next one while I kind of figure out what happened with that. Uh Chargers Cardinals. Oh, oh, oh. oh boy. So my big question on this will be. Does Kyler Murray play at all? I say yes. I say he's got to. He's got to. If they want to see this air raid offense and how it's going to work against the NFL defense, and mind you, the Chargers have a good defense. If this was a, a regular season game, we would find out real fast if uh, Kingsbury is going to have a, a Chip Kelly moment. But since it's preseason, 
and they're gonna keep it kind of vanilla, I think this would be a good time to unveil that air raid a little bit. And let us let us see how how it looks. Now, I think that that's not what they're going to do. If they give you air raid, it's going to be the most vanilla air right. raid. I agree. Okay. But it will be air raid nonetheless. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Um, not because yeah. they're afraid to show it off, but they got to make sure it's going to work. <laughs> You know, something that's funny, and I'll, I'll throw this out there also, because it's kind of almost like a pet peeve of mine. In the preseason, I know in the Hall of Fame game they mentioned it. The defense, defensive coordinators know they're up against the, the second-string blockers, the second-string quarterbacks, so they blitz a lot. <laughs> you uh, know? And yeah. it's like, you know, I mean – well, don't you want to see your backs in coverage? Don't you want to see what they have to do when they don't have, you know? I mean, that just seems like it's cheating the players out of, you know, putting them in the types of situations that you really want them to see. Yeah, of course, your linemen get excited when they sack somebody and everything because they're, you know, they, they, they're catching these guys and they don't quite have their coordination down. But to me, I, didn't they used to not blitz or something like that? Am I, is that something that – no, in the in the in the Pro Bowl, no blessing is allowed. But this ain't the Pro Bowl. This is the that's just trying to look. Dudes are trying to win jobs. The Pro Bowl, yeah, this that's is a, what it is. This is a very conflicting time for an NFL coach. Guys are trying to win jobs, so you're trying to put them in situations where they can prove that they deserve that position on the team. But you want to win too, and it's 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 a crazy balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You it, never it, go into yeah. a game, even a preseason game, you don't go into a game thinking, I don't care if we win. That's, yeah, you play to win the game, as uh, yeah. as um, Herm Edwards, you know, said. And the, but but you're playing to win the game by, without your best players, because you're holding them out. Right. And without your full uh, playbook, because you're, you're only, you got the vanilla yeah, right. I wonder, like when they open up the the playbook, and it says section one, the vanilla playbook, <laughs> and then you know, section two, the regular playbook, and everything else. You know, they they, they know what their vanilla plays are, and and it, that is not something that they make up just to play in that game. That's their real stuff. It's just stripped down, you know. But if that's what they're practicing then they want them to be able to do it well. And even though it's vanilla, if you do it well, that's good for you. And it shows good for the offense. The stories, again, you know, of the guys that are out there fighting for their lives, is, I just find them to be, you know, um, so intriguing. Uh, next week, I, I want to finish going through an article. There's a guy by the name of Booby something who came, was it Cousins? He, he left school early. He declared for the pros uh, as an undrafted free agent early. Um, oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Booby Williams? Yeah, maybe that's Texas, what it was. A Texas kid? Yeah. Yeah. Now he can't get with a team. He's really, like, not sticking with anybody. And they were talking about his life. He's almost like Josh Jacobs with the whole homeless situation. Okay. Football is a way out. Okay. Doing it everything he has, but unlike Josh Jacobs, he's you know he's not sticking. You know. And yeah. So his, Williams, I think that's his name. Yeah. There's a story that I I started reading this week about him, and you know it it's again it's heart rendering to see these guys you know put give it everything they got, you know put the hopes of their whole family you know on their back to see if they can make it you know, and then don't make it, you know, or just struggle. So hopefully he'll he'll catch on or whatever, but such drama, um, there's a lot of drama in the background in these guys' personal stories. You ready to move on to the next game? Yeah, sure, sure. Not that many more left. Bucks, Steelers. Buccaneers, I got to see some Jameis Winston. There's no need to hold him out because it's the first game. Uh, him and Bruce Arians. Bruce Arians is supposed to be uh, rebuilding this guy from the ground up and making him better. Um, 
So I, I think he's got to get at least a series. I really hope to see him for at least a series out there with the starters, and then you can pull them all. You know, who are they playing? Steelers. Steelers. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jeez. I think you're going to see – very little of James Conner, probably no Roethlisberger. I doubt if Juju will play either. You're going to get – now, what you will get is Eli Rogers and uh, the other guy's name, Washington. They should be out there, and they should be out there for the majority of the first half because they're fighting for real jobs. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and again, the, the other dynamic we were talking about, vanilla offenses, not playing your best players – uh, but still trying to, you know, move your team forward and, you know, and, and, and have them progress. But we do have certain situations um, where you have new coaches, new systems. I think the Bucks are going from a, a 4-3 to a 3-4 on defense. Oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah, so, you know, a, a lot of learning that needs to be done. And, again, uh, so much of it not going to be done by their top players uh, in terms of any new systems and any new learning. That's, again, what made the whole uh, Kyler Murray thing so interesting. You got a new coach and a new quarterback coming in with a new system. Um, well, I mean, it's not like they're not practicing this stuff. They just don't get to do it against somebody else unless they bring another team in for a scrimmage. Well, they are practicing. They're running seven-on-seven seven drills and all of that kind of stuff, but – you know, the real deal is, you know, has some additional complexities to it. So, uh, you know, that's, they can, they're moving closer to that. All right. Buck Steelers, we just handled that. This is a, a replay of a playoff, of the playoffs last year. Vikings, Saints. Vikings, Saints. Psh, won't be too many guys starting there, too many starters starting there. Uh yeah, tell me about Oh, that. guess what? We might see some Taysom Hill. Could have a Taysom Hill sighting. Which Maybe starting the game at quarterback? Thanks. Well, don't they still have um what's his name from that came from the Vikings? Yes. Is he still hurt? Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater, because we yeah. might see some Teddy, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's, That's a strange dynamic having Teddy there and Tyson there because Tyson's the he's the, the the he can do everything, but we don't know if you really want him to be your starting quarterback. I mean, you don't want him to be because Drew Brees is still there, but well beyond that. He's earned I'm sure he knows enough of the offense to be able to handle the job sufficiently. It would simply be a matter of live reps back there on a full time basis. I mean, he plays four different positions, so he probably knows the offense better than some of the receivers do, you know? Next up, Rams, Raiders. Keeping it in Cali, Rams, Raiders. The big deal with the Raiders, I think, is um, everybody wants to see Josh Jacobs running back. Uh, mm -hmm. Here's the thing. <laughs> I'm not going to try to call this one because it's going to be one or the other. Some people expect him to come in, not even be barely challenged for the starting job and get it handed to him. And he goes crazy because he, now he played at Alabama. Okay. What people forget is Alabama used like four running backs last season. So I don't think he had a game this last year where he had close to 15, 20 carries. You know, he might have ran for 6.2 yards per carry, but maybe he only had eight carries per game. You see what I'm saying? So that yeah. could be some real fresh legs on a really talented kid that comes in and just blows things up like, like Ty Gurley or something. Or, <laughs> or, or it could be the other way. The fact that maybe he finds out he can't handle 20 carries per game to be the bell cow running back that they expect him to be. That would be a shame, but it's happened before. If you remember Trent Richardson. So. Yeah. Right, 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 right. It was Alabama running backs. I don't know something about them guys. Um, 
Who's backing up Todd Gurley right now? Any idea? Oh yeah, it's a kid. Uh, it's a it's a it's a young kid because they let C.J. Anderson go. He's now backing up a young kid in Detroit. Um, for some reason I think his name is Henderson. You got it there? Not yet, but I'll try to pull this up. Um, again, you got a situation where Gruden has all his superstars. Did you see? Yeah, he is with the Rams, by the way, yes. Huh? The kid with the Rams is Daryl Henderson from Memphis. Okay. Good okay. size, good speed. Good size, good speed. Did you see Antonio Brown's feet? Oh, God, no. What's wrong with his feet? He didn't hear. <laughs> he what? He is out. He is, is no, you know, they have out as a football-related injury and a non-football-related injury. So he's not playing because of a non-football related injury. Apparently, he was using one of those cryogenic machines and got frostbite. Got frostbite. I knew it. I knew it. Dude, if you don't know how to work the John, you're supposed to tell the people, yo, I need somebody in the room with me because... I don't want to mess up. Come on, man. All those millions, and this guy is sitting around because he's – and, I mean, it looked nasty, too. It was like a whole layer of skin. Yeah, just, I bet he did. He's looking he didn't have to cut his darn toe off or something. Oh, right. my God. You know, that, he's, he's a handful. He is a handful. Anyway, uh, moving on beyond that, we have the Bengals and the Chiefs. So the Bengals have a new coach, and yeah, they Chiefs, do. you have Patrick Mahomes coming back. He won't get any playing time. Mm -mm, no. Nah. Uh, let's see. You have to see who's uh, who's backing up. I guess both the Bengals probably need that again. New coach, old quarterback, but new systems need you know need to get that that much more of a need to get coordinated. Um, yeah, that's somebody I would think they would give a little time, even though he's a veteran. Right, right. Just a, just a little, you know. Just a little. Um, we wouldn't see A.J. Green, but turns out he's actually injured also. Uh, that injury is probably going to take him a little bit into the season, at least a couple of weeks. So, Who is the lucky guy that's backing up Patrick Mahomes? I don't know. Who is it? I'm getting ready to find that out for you because you're talking about somebody who's getting like no no love, no nothing. Uh, it's got to be that guy. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, MVP, man of the hour, man of the year. Um, well, you know, backup quarterbacks don't really look for any uh, any shine until the backup starts to have trouble. It's the favorite thing of NFL crowds, well, sports crowds in general, to start cheering for the backup when the starters having problems. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, well, if Mahomes has trouble, we'll find out that guy's name real quick. But I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. Well, I don't see that happening either. Um, but it would be, it's interesting to think about who that guy is. And I'm trying to look through the database here and we'll have him in, in a second. But, you know, it's one thing to be behind even a Nick Foles. I don't even know who, who's uh, backing up Nick Foles right now. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to look that one up a little bit uh, because Nick Foles is normally the backup. Who's backing up that guy? Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. We got quarterbacks. We have Chad Henney, Chase Litton, John Lovett, and Kyle Shermer. Oh, Kyle Shermer? Kyle Shermer. I have no idea why is this. That a is the Giants head coach's son. <laughs> it is all right um 
But Chad Henney is the name that I recognize as probably the backup. Am I correct on that? Veteran guy's been on a couple different teams. Uh, last I heard, I think he was with Jacksonville. But it could have been somebody else. He's played for He's played for a couple of teams. Pretty much a career backup at this point. And rounding out the weekend, prime time, 9 o'clock Saturday night, get your popcorn ready, Cowboys Niners. <laughs> oh, Cowboys Niners. The old rivalry. The old what shame, rivalry. What a shame it's not a real game. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we are pretty sure we won't see Zeke. No, nah, he's not even going to be around. He's in Mexico. He's in Mexico. We won't see Dak. Um, you won't we, see Amari. We won't see Amari. We won't see um, Gab. Um, what's his name? Jimmy G, man. Jimmy G. That's Jimmy your quarterback, G. man. He's supposed that's to put sunglasses on and go, that's my quarterback. <laughs> my quarterback. <laughs> my quarterback. I didn't even do like, when I said 49ers, I was going to uh -huh. See, you're getting uh, soft. Lippin. No, the backup, the guy that played last year. What's his name? The guy was good. Oh, yeah, you know, he's the second string. He, he is the yeah, backup. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. He's going to start the game. Nick and time. <laughs> yeah, Nick Mullen, he'll, he'll start the game. He'll start the game. He'll start the game. Now, I don't know this, how long he'll play. One of the things that was hilarious, his rating is so much better than C.J. Beathard on Madden this year. And most of it has to do with awareness. And yeah. I'm like... Bedford had like two years of playing time before Nick showed up. Right. But look how well he played. Yeah. Just coming in there. He like was he showed so uncommon poise right from the jump. Very much so. Very much so. Even though I must admit, he threw a, a pick six. And he was, it was funny watching him chase the guy down. And after a while, he's like, ah, go ahead, down. <laughs> But yeah, uh, Nick will be will, should be getting some run as a starting quarterback, and then we'll see CJ probably after that. Um, and the Cowboys, uh, not quite sure who's going to be coming in for them, but they have a new offensive coordinator, so they have a need themselves uh, to really kind of get things clicking and make sure that you know their people are all on the same page. Um, uh, and, and with the Cowboys, so not and you know not sure. Let's see, we're going to figure that out in a minute. But I think that that's just a good rivalry, even though it's not you know the starters. You should see you know some good work coming out of these guys. Uh, yeah, well, just just hearing that those two teams are playing each other is going to attract people just from just so you can see those two uniforms going at each other on the screen, <laughs> let alone who's in them. <laughs> Speaking of new uniforms, oh, I think this was a college team. They had a, a new uniform, and they were getting hammered on one of the things. It, whoever it was, they wear green. Michigan. Michigan State. You saw this new uniform? No, but Michigan State wears green and white. Okay, Michigan State. Absolutely horrendous <laughs> new uniform. How bad could it be? They only got two colors. Dude, they had Michigan State new uniform. You have to see it. It just just it you know, up. Um, it's it was really bad, and uh, the guys on the on the uh, show were really giving it to them. Oh, I got a picture of it. That's horrible. <laughs> They said the students don't like it. The fans are the fans don't like it. And Anybody with taste would not like that uniform. It's, it, I, you know. Bro, it's ugly. That's <laughs> uniform. It's ugly. I see one, two, three, four quarterbacks listed for the Cowboys. Taron Christian, Cooper Rush, Mike White, in addition to Dak Prescott. Don't know much about any of those guys. Uh, but we do know that as far as running back is concerned, since Zeke is not going to be there, they've got Jordan Chun, 
uh, Darius Jackson, uh, Alfred Morris, projected starter so far, I do believe. Tony Pollard, who wasn't he there last year? Tony Pollard. Uh, I think I remember him last year. Yeah. Mike Weber Jr. I don't. I don't know him. Is Mike Weber the linebacker? Still the linebacker? Webster. Webster. Weber. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So that pretty much rounds out the um, the weekend coming up for the preseason. Um, for people like myself who are looking to find, you know, see some new talent emerge, see some guys who have stories that, you know, they, and they'll talk about how they're fighting for a position or even fighting just to get on the practice squad. I think the practice squad make it, practice squad players are making like six figures, like 100K a year. So that's not a bad job if you can get it, um, even though it doesn't come with a lot of security. But, hey, <laughs> a year, you know. If the average person is making 30, that's like three years worth of salary if you play your cards right. That's right. That um, So we normally move over to the rants to finish out the show. Uh, do you have anything in particular? Um, let me see. Do I have a rant? Nah, I don't think I do. Uh I, I, I could say that um, because so many news outlets and sports news outlets and Twitter and what have you is pretty much shoveling dirt on my team, uh, which is the New York football giants, I feel compelled to say if they win six or seven games, now I'm going to throw that back in everybody's face because we're pretty much pictured as being the, the, the cellar dwellers of the NFC East. And I, I don't think that's right. I think um, some of the moves that the GM made were very unpopular, not only with the fans, but also with the media. The media, those guys were media guys too. They stood up in the locker rooms, they gave good points. So it's like everybody's against him now, them, the fans, everybody. But it's not like they can't play. I mean, it's still an NFL team, my goodness. People are, people are really, really looking down on the Giants. And I know, okay, it's New York, sure. Pile on, yeah, Yankees, yeah, all of that. I'll take it. But we're going to turn out to be better than people think. Watch and see. Okay, all right, all right. Well, you know, we're, we're both huge fans of Saquon, the gift Barkley. Um, we know he'll be featured. Uh, you going to grab him on your uh, fantasy um, nah, he's, uh, he's a franchise player for somebody else in my main league. Ah, uh, already, yeah, already got him. You let, you let him get away. Oh man. Gee, Chris. Wow. It was, I had circumstances. <laughs> but I'm okay. I got Christian McCaffrey. who's going for a thousand and a thousand. And I got Alvin Kamara and Drew Brees. So I'll be uh, all right. Two, two combo backs, two, three down backs. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's that. That should put some good points up there. Okay, so I don't know if this would be a rant, but let, I want this is sort of an extension of of our conversation last week, and I know you you really felt strongly when I started talking about the owners um, and their eighteen game season. Oh, yeah, that's what I want to see. That 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 look of no, that ain't gonna work. Da 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 da. But I do want to mention that the preseason, you already, you complained practically the entire time that we were talking about, you know, if it was a real game, I'd be excited. <laughs> I'm just being honest, bro. I understand. I'm just I being understand. honest. I started looking at some of the injuries that are coming in. These guys haven't even gotten to a preseason game yet. Nick Bosa. Jason Verrett, Joe Hayden, Antonio Brown, Luck, already all of these guys are out, right? Yep. And so and we're, and we're sitting here talking about who's the second string, you know, player and, and, and how that's going to happen. Well, I mean, a lot, of that, a lot of those guys are out probably for precautionary measures. Um, no, Nick Bosa's guys the fact MRI. That, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you need the results yet, though? No, this just this just popped this up happened. today on on my phone this evening. So this is okay. pretty recent. 
And he, he had a major injury in college, too. So, you know, that's the chance. Exactly. He didn't even finish out, you know. Exactly. Uh, at, at, at so hopefully State. it's not a reoccurrence of that. So you have an absence of your top players in the preseason. You have, a, you have the vanilla offenses, as we talked about. So you're not seeing the full strength of the offensive and the def- defensive schemes and the things. That's, that's, that's my whole point. All of that. So that devalues it, right? Right. And and so you 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 and then you've got the defenses basically just blitzing the hell out of the new guys, you know. Uh, not a hundred percent. It'll happen. They do a lot of that though. They do a lot of it. So yeah, in an attempt to win the game against an unexperienced lineman and quarterback, if they're trying to win the game, yeah, sure. So uh, I could pretty much just label this faux football, you know, F A U X faux, faux, not it what real. Want. No, nothing to get super excited about unless you're like me. See, I'm the guy that that watches American Idol, um, not for the silly people who think they can sing and get up there and make fools of themselves, but for the people that come in and show some raw talent that need to be polished. And I love watching them go from unpolished new raw talent to really competing in that top 10 and going, wow, they've come a long way. I, I, I love that about that. And I love that about the NFL. But with an 18 game season, you'd have your, you know, your preseason workouts, your camps, you get your two games in and then bam, it's real football from there on. So uh, I still like it. I still think that there is a possibility that at some particular point, the the people the consumer is going to say, "Woo, whoa! Did you hear that?" Yeah, that was a big one. That's <laughs> a, it's rumbling outside there. Um, that people are going to you know be like, "I'm not wasting my time watching this stuff," you know, unless they're real hardcore people that like what I like. So I think that the NFL is actually risking their popularity a little bit with this whole thing. And then you add to that the people who just are not going to play, period, until the season starts, you know, it's just been agreed to. It's just yeah. not going to happen. Also, I think they're, they're kind of gambling, using their popularity to pull people in to watch these games and then hoping that they actually become competitive. Like for people who are real fans of particular teams or just people that just love to see NFL football. And they're banking their popularity on that. Now, I actually feel the same way as you, except I'm lazy. I'll cut the game on, but I'm looking for somebody to stand out, some real talent, maybe even a guy I never even heard his name. And I'm like, oh, look at this dude. That's how I, how I discovered Victor Cruz. Oh, really? I was watching it, yeah, and they're like, oh, the rookie from UMass. I'm like, huh? Who? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I got to watch and make sure that I'm watching the news, make sure he didn't get cut. He okay. made it cut. He played again in the next game. He had another great game. I'm like, oh, we got somebody. We good. So, but if I get in the first half and nobody stands out, I'll wait to see if he stood out when I watch Sports Center the next day. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. You'll see him in the highlights. If you don't make it to the highlights, we're not worried about him. Right. Because, right, if they, if they end up being a standout, if it's Joe Schmo. From from who knows what tech, you know, if he stands out, he'll be on Sports Center the next day. So, all right, we actually kind of agree on that. I was I was looking for more of an argument. What the hell? <laughs> no, you want an argument with me? What I give you is, you can cut down the preseason games to two games, and still just play seventeen weeks. Why do you have to have the extra games? Why do we do it? For the money, exactly. Which is why, <laughs> which is why <laughs> the NFLPA needs to be like, screw that. Money is nice. I love money, just like everybody else. But you're going to run us into the ground. Well, that's where we ran into our conversation last week. If you if you make if you limit those players to 16 games out of 18, then you don't run them into the ground no more than the 16 game season. You have two new revenue streams. You've got gambling coming on board, and you've got an international expansion. So that money's going to increase. 
And I just, I like the fact that they could potentially spread that money around a little bit more. Um, it's, again, I have that feeling even about the lottery. I, I hate to see one person win a half a trillion dollars when they could have given, you know, 500 people a billion dollars. You know? I got you. So you. I'm, I'm kind of come from that. All right, moving right along. Uh, as we close out, we'd like to mention our social media. Uh, you have here in front of you our Facebook page, Ben and Barry on Football at BNBOF. Uh, come visit us here. We try to post some interesting things, things uh, that might help you with your game. Uh, we've got uh, Tony Gonzalez there with his great speech that we talked about. And um, again, you can come there and, and share, uh, you know, and take a look at the things that we've shared uh, there. In addition, I did mention that I produced the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings. You can find them on Facebook at Sterling NPPR. Uh, we'll be getting into the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings uh, uh, once the regular season starts. I don't really track the preseason numbers uh, because it's full football. Isn't that what we called it? <laughs> <laughs> um, before the season begins, though, uh, we will have uh, on our agenda in, a, in an upcoming meeting before the season starts um, a show on how teams finished last year's season. Um, Absolutely. Points-wise, I mean. Uh, Absolutely. We are also on Twitter at BNB on Football. Join us here. We try to follow – some of the top names in football, if you follow, if you check in with us. Um, here's something, Ben, that we didn't talk about. I'm going to show this real quick. And... 5 a.m. Five days a week for three years. Still ready. <laughs> Is he getting ready for something? Because <laughs> it's not to play football. That is the question. Come on, man. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know what this commercial's about, but I'm not that impressed. <laughs> You're not impressed? No, he's not working any harder than anybody else who's got a job. Playing football <laughs> in the gym, working out just like that. But isn't it interesting? Because I, if you remember in previous shows, uh, Benny, I, yeah, again, me being a Niner fan and having tracked through this whole Kaepernick saga, one of my things that I said over and over was, I haven't seen you even like post anything saying that you're doing any type of football workout. I even said here as I posted that and I shared a comment, I said, I'd love to see you, you know, running some passing drills. You know, I want to see you throwing the ball. I want to see you dropping dives. If you really talk about playing football. So you're not impressed with his gym workout either then? Well, I mean, I do the stuff he's doing in, in that video and I'm 65. It's more than what he's shown up to this point. That's true. That's my whole thing. All of a sudden, out of the clear blue sky, we have a workout video from Colin Kaepernick. And I just thought it was interesting. I'm like, okay, dude, we haven't seen that. You know, maybe we will see him throwing the, you know, throwing against uh, receivers running the route tree. Yeah, I can throw the, the post. I can throw the flag. I can throw the out. I can throw the curl. I can throw the hitch. I can throw the short. I can throw the, throw the medium and the long, you know. You this never know. Like is this kind of like starting out with the high school ball? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> First, I'm going to make a video of me lifting some weights. <laughs> then I'm going to show you show you a video of me throwing a the ball. <laughs> then the next video, I'll actually be throwing it to people running routes. You know, I got to work my way up. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> Absolutely. Because I thought that was interesting. You can go to our Twitter feed for that. Um, and here we are with our Instagram page, Ben and uh, B and B O F. Uh, uh, look at those two. Don't they look great? Oh man, do you know? Do you know who this guy is? Eric Rayweather. No, he who's that? is a guy who um, has a Madden channel, and he does a review of all of the Madden game. Really? Does a really good job too. Good. I was gonna say, yeah. Yeah, uh, does a really good job. Um, he he'll take you into the different playbooks, you know, the different um, aspects of the game. He's been doing this apparently for a while now. He's got a pretty good YouTube following, and uh, you know, I've I've kept an eye on him, you know, to see what's going on. Maybe one day we can get him on the show. Uh, but yeah, that that was him, and he, I follow him on now on Instagram also. So that's cool. That's cool. You can, you can reach us in all of those social media pages, and of course, if you go to www.benandbarry.com you will go directly to our YouTube channel where all of our videos are so it's wrap up time Mr. Dickerson any last words go nose alrighty peace out <laughs>